From Little Things, Big Things Grow by Jasmine H. Lowe Warning To Aboriginal and Torres Straits Islander readers, the following article contains images and voices of people who have passed away. Blackheart On August 9th, 2021, International Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples, themed Leaving No One Behind, left me thinking of our future and of the concept of freedom. On one hand, I'm in awe of the manner in which Australians embrace the acknowledgement of country at all official functions held by community, corporate and government. On the other hand, I'm uneasy about the fact that Australia's Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are not acknowledged in Australia's 121-year-old constitution. It's been 55 years since the first walk-off by the Gurindji people, yet that theme of leaving no one behind this year makes that walk-off just a distant dream. As a third culture kid, I've lived in Hong Kong, Malaysia and Australia, not because of having what some may think as a privileged life, but because I was a minor who towed along while my parents lived theirs. I felt compelled to write about freedom while thinking of the day Malaya got its independence from British rule in 1957. It didn't feel right to celebrate another year without really knowing what got us there. Many of us experience Independence Day celebrations with fireworks, march pass, dance performances and concerts and all in the spirit of celebrating a nation's freedom. But what got the nation there? to emancipation. Yellow Heart, British in Malaya. A quick dip into historical events which show the timeline from when the British East India Company made a deal in 1786 with the Sultanate of Kedah, a state bordering Malaya and Thailand, to form the first of what would be the Strait Settlement comprising of Malacca and Singapore later on. At the time, Burma and Siam had the Sultanate concerned, so the arrival of Francis Light and his foresight in offering military protection, albeit without the knowledge of Britain at the time, to the Sultanate was welcomed and a contract signed to cede, well actually it was a rental agreement, the jungle island with only 58 inhabitants to Light. The trust backfired five years later when Light couldn't supply the military support and instead fought the Sultanate of Kedah, refusing to return the island. His predecessor, Leith, extended the British grip on Province Wellesley on the mainland. Light reneged on a deal with the Sultanate, but what is admirable is that a young man from Suffolk set sail at age 25 to the unknowns of the Andaman Sea, met and then set up a trading post with his lifelong Catholic partner, Martina Rosells in Thalang, north of today's Phuket. They were an influential and industrious couple, and she bore him three girls and two sons, one of whom was William Light, who would later found Adelaide in South Australia. Alas, it was the tropical mosquitoes that got Light, who died of malaria at age 54. By that time, Penang's population had grown to around 20,000. And being the first British outpost in the Straits, it drew attention from traders, merchants and labourers from afar. Light rests in a prominent part of Georgetown, Penang, and is acknowledged as its founding father, though not all would think so kindly of him, as his statue in Fort Cornwallis was splashed with red paint last year. Light paved the way from that one British outpost. By 1896, the British had formed FMS, Federation of Malay States, in consultation with the Sultans of Selangor, Perak, Negeri Sembilan and Pahang. And that stretched through until 1946, despite three years of interruption during World War II. It then came together with two of the former Strait Settlement, Penang and Malacca, 
and the unfederated Malay states of Kedah, Kelantan, Terengganu, and Johor to form the Malayan Union. And by 1957, independence as the Federation of Malaya. It was six years later in 1963 that together with North Borneo, Sabah, Sarawak and Singapore, Malaysia was formed, with Singapore leaving in 65 to go its own way. And, well, that is history as told by textbooks. Blindsided, in school textbooks are stories about the indigenous peoples, like the Orang Aslis and the Orang Asals, leaving generations of children growing up without much knowledge nor understanding for the cultures of the first people. Where were they in history? What happened? Didn't they also fight for peace during World War II? They make up 13.8% of Malaysia's 32 million population. So it's a good question to raise and a strong reason to lobby for Indigenous peoples and their stories to be told in schools, at the workplace and local community programs. Blue Heart, voice from the heartland. Coming from migrant stock, I'm sensitive to this topic and have been all in for First Nations appreciation since my arrival to Australia as a teenager when it celebrated its bicentenary. Australia is my heartland. It's a second home and it always has a place in my heart. Imagine arriving to a celebration of 200 years since the first British settler set foot in Australia. I quickly learned that at that impressionable young age, that one man's meat is indeed another's poison, and that there were two events in the one same city. Sorry Day in La Perouse, south of Sydney, and Australia Day in the harbour front of Gadigal Land. How can one celebrate when another is sombre? This juxtaposition of thought camps remains the crux of January 26 for me personally. Fast forward to 2020, in response to a socially distanced society, Sydney's iconic opera house became the film location for a musician who had a dream to sing atop the sails of the opera house. That dream became a realisation and Ziggy Ramo Bumaruk Fatnawa was thrust into the spotlight with his collaboration with the Sydney Opera House for his powerful Black Thoughts album. Juxtaposition again, as we celebrate the rise of a First Nations Australian artist akin to his people rising above the pain atop an iconic landmark. He's made his mark overseas too, states a Sydney Morning Herald article. Released 25 years ago today, from Little Things, Big Things Grow has become an iconic Australian protest song, paying tribute to the Gurindji people and becoming symbolic of the broader movement for Indigenous equality and land rights in Australia. That was a quote by Nick Henderson, stored in the National Film and Sound Archive Australia. The ageless tune and lyrics of this song has been remade several times. The ageless tune and lyrics of this song has been remade several times. There's a version by Electric Fields, a group made up of Zachariaha Fielding and keyboard player and producer Michael Ross. They sing in they sing in Pijan Jajara, Yen Kun Jajara, and English. It's humbling to go back in time and learn what people fought for. It was for their basic human right to exist freely on land their grandfather settled on. It was to say no to unfair treatment in wages and workers' rights. It's humbling, yet empowering at the same time. For someone like me, who's a migrant, no matter where I go, someone with no land to fight for. Because my motherland is in my heart. But if I were to fight for land, it would be in Malaysia where family has been in court battles for the past 60 years. But that's another story for another day. Right now, I'm in a place I call my heartland, a place my mother dreamed of, a new home for our generation, all of whom are already naturalised, apart from myself. Paying tribute to Vincent Lingiari. 
It was Labour's Gough Whitlam, Australia's 21st Prime Minister, that was captured in a symbolic photo op, pouring red earth into the palms of Vincent Lingiari AM, 1908 to 1988, a Northern Territory cattle stockman who led 200 men, women and children in what's known as the Wave Hill Cattle Station Walk-Off, or the Gurindji Strike in 1966, which marked the beginning of a walk with intention to say no, stop your bullying and threats, treat workers with human rights, stop your rape on our women, stop your threats. That photo was snapped in 1975 by Mervyn Bishop, one of the first Aboriginal photographers hired by the Sydney Morning Herald. And it captured Whitlam, handing over land deeds of Gurindji country to Lingiari. On 7 June 1976, Lingiari was named a member of the Order of Australia for his services to the Aboriginal people. And this month, in 2021, Lingiari's granddaughter launches Freedom Day, a book to honour his legacy. Songwriters Kev Kamodi and Paul Kelly wrote and performed a national treasure of a song at the memorial service of the honorary of the honorary Gough Whitlam, who served as PM from 1972 to 1975. Songwriters Kev Kamodi and Paul Kelly wrote and performed a national treasure of a song at the memorial service of the honorary Gough Whitlam, who served as PM from 1972 to 1975. This story, told in rhyme, is so powerful it's been remade several times. Meanwhile, the fight for freedom and acknowledgement continues. Red Heart, a dedication to all Malaysians, especially Malaysia's indigenous communities. As a Malaysian born, I've been conscious of its long, dumbed-down history of land rights among the Aboriginal native Orang Asli and Orang Asal. I've seen friends tell through personal experiences, through documentaries they would shoot, horrendous tales of blockades in the centre of the earth as termed by the Termias in the east coast of Peninsula Malaysia, blocking tree loggers from pulling roots out from their earth, their land, which was licensed out to commercial loggers. These brave individuals would set up blockades a la Man versus Tractor. Now this song by Paul Kelly and Ziggy Ramo and Electric Fields keeps the fire burning for the other people fighting land rights and there needs to be fires burning long through the nights for this fight to be fought. On the eve of this 63rd Independence Madeka Day in Malaysia, I've had this song translated into Bahasa Malaysia and written this short piece, this article, to show respect to a culture, if not protected, will be forever lost. It's really baby steps forward, but giant strides backwards if we allow our last remaining forest, ancestral land for the first peoples of Malaysia, what's left of it, to be plumaged with no recourse. There's no turning back if we let it happen. We must not let it happen. Protect it at all costs. Just like how the tree huggers, Chipko activists in the 1970s in India did. 30 years ago in 1989, the International Labour Organization, ILO, adopted Convention Number no. 169 on Indigenous and Tribal Peoples to facilitate the development of dialogue between a country's government and the indigenous peoples who live in that country. So far, only 23 countries have ratified this convention with no, no Commonwealth country on the list. The Indigenous and Tribal Peoples ILO 169 aims to protect the human rights of indigenous peoples and acknowledge the aspirations of these people to exercise control over their own institutions ways of life and economic development and to maintain and develop their identities, language, 
languages and religions within the framework of the states in which they live, states uh, an ILO report. So with the help of my friend CC, also known as Shahada Adam, we worked on the translation of that signature song into Bahasa Malaysia. And maybe one day, young Malaysians will write their own versions of songs of liberation and continue their journey to speak up and speak out. Perhaps artists like Shak Koyok could leave a legacy like Lingiari and his name and his Temuan culture be preserved and his people merdeka, merdeka, merdeka. On this note, on this note, I wish you all happy Freedom Day. Wherever you may be reading or listening to this from, for when we stop speaking out, even if it's counter-narrative, our freedom to just be our authentic selves will be compromised. Thank you. Dari benda kecil, benda besar berkembang. Berkumpullah semua orang dan saya akan bercerita kisah kuasa dan keangkuhan sepanjang lapan tahun si British Lord Vesti dan Vincent Lingiari kedua-duanya pihak bertentangan Vesti gemuk dengan wang dan kuasa daging urus niaganya pintunya besar Vincent tegap dan tidak banyak bercakap dia tiada wang tanah keras adalah lantainya dari benda kecil, benda besar berkembang. Dari benda kecil, benda besar berkembang. Berkumpullah semua orang dan saya akan bercerita kisah kuasa dan keangkuhan sepanjang 8 tahun. Si British Lord Vesti dan Vincent Lingiari, kedua-duanya pihak bertentangan. Vesti gemuk dengan wang dan kuasa daging urus niaganya pintunya besar Vincent tegap dan tidak banyak bercakap dia tiada wang tanah keras adalah lantainya dari benda kecil benda besar berkembang dari benda kecil benda besar berkembang Gurinji Dulu bekerja hanya untuk jatuan Di mana mereka pernah mengumpul kekayaan tanah Penindasan hari semakin genting Gurunji memutus mereka harus menentang Mereka mengangkat gendongan dan mula berjalan Di Wati Creek, mereka duduk terperap bersama Tindakan itu bukan sebanyak mana Tetapi orang berketuk ketak di rumah, ladang dan juga di pekan Dari benda kecil Benda besar berkembang Dari benda kecil Benda besar berkembang Lelaki Vesti berkata Aku akan gandakan gaji kamu 18 pound seminggu kamu akan terima Vincent berkata Tidak kami bukan bercakap mengenai gaji. Kami duduk di sini sehingga kami dapat tanah kami. Lelaki Vesti mengaum dan lelaki Vesti gemuruk. Kamu langsung tidak mempunyai peluang. Vince berkata, sekiranya kami tumbang, lain akan bangkit. Dari benda kecil, benda besar berkembang. Dari benda kecil, Benda besar berkembang. Kemudian, Vincent Linggiari menaiki kapal terbang. Mendarat di Sydney, kutub besar berlampu dan setiap hari dia berjalan. Memberitahu kisahnya dengan lembut kepada orang dari semua lapisan masyarakat. Dan Vincent duduk dengan ahli-ahli politik besar. Urusan ini mereka beritahu dia adalah hal negeri. Benarkan kami menyelesaikan orang kamu lapar. Vincent berkata, 
Tidak apa. Kami tahu bagaimana untuk menunggu. Dari benda kecil, benda besar berkembang. Dari benda kecil, benda besar berkembang. Kemudian, Vincent Dinggiari kembali menaiki kapal terbang. Kembali ke negaranya semula untuk duduk dan memberitahu orangnya biarkan bintang saling mengelip. Kita mempunyai kawan di selatan, di kota dan di bandar. Lapan tahun berlalu, lapan tahun menunggu. Satu hari, orang asing yang tinggi muncul di daerah. Dan dia datang dengan peguam dan dia datang dengan upacara besar dan memberi segenggam pasir di tanggang Vincent. Dari benda kecil, benda besar berkembang. Dari benda kecil, benda besar berkembang. Itulah kisah Vincent Linggiari. Tetapi kisah ini adalah lebih daripada itu. Bagaimana kuasa dan hak istimewa tidak boleh menganjak mereka yang berpendirian teguh dan dari segi undang-undang. Dari benda kecil, benda besar berkembang. Dari benda kecil, benda besar berkembang.